Well, let's tell him about Cortez, who told us to uh, find him. Cortez told me to look you up. He did, did he? I see. <clears throat> Who's Cortez? You don't know him? I think not. I'd certainly remember. Did, did you say Cortez? Y you wouldn't be talking about old Manny Chavez, would you? Well, he ought to be dead by now, but then, by all rights, uh, <laughs> so should I. <laughs> I don't know his first name, but he calls himself Cortez. Tall fellow, mysterious and elusive, rarely answers a question with a simple yes or no. Smokes like a chimney? Aside from that bit about smoking like a chimney, it sounds exactly like Cortez. Maybe he quit. Manny. I'll be damned. That old crook is still around. Well, how the devil is he? He's good. Where do you know him from? Oh, my old life back in Stark. We had some exciting adventures, him and I. Actually, he's part of the reason I ended up here. I last saw him in the winter of 1934. But that's almost 300 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? And I'm sure he doesn't look a day older than he did back then. The handsome devil. <laughs> well, if I'm going to accept magic in parallel worlds, I might as well accept people living 300 years. Might as well. Oh, no, you misunderstand. <clears throat> I'm only 46. I arrived here about 15 years ago, but I... I left Stark in 1934. Between the worlds where you dream, time has little meaning. I was trapped, you see, for, for quite a while. For 300 years? Time went by pretty fast. It didn't seem so bad at the time, but now that you mention it, 300 years, quite disconcerting, really. Quite disconcerting. Okay. Kind of curious how he got here. How did you end up here in Mercuria? <laughs> That's quite a story. I won't bore you with the details, but suffice it to say, I was always somewhat of an adventurer. The promise of virgin territory untouched by civilization held great sway with me in my youth, as did the idea of a highly spiritual state of mind. The occult, magic, karma. I was born in 1902 in Boston. By the time I was 17, I'd put that life behind me. I spent the next three years at sea, and then I wandered around Europe for a time. In the early 30s, the 1930s, of course, I found myself in India, working as a journalist. That's where I met Manny, and that's where I first heard of Arcadia. I was amazed and quite skeptical at first, but the thought of a whole new world to see and magic? <laughs> I was a fool, of course, but who knew where my curiosity would bring me? So what happened in India? I've tried to forget about it, to be honest. If I could go back and convince myself not to... Oh, but I still wouldn't have listened, of course. The unknown tracks. I ended up in Tibet in the winter of 34, wading through snow up to my chest, thinking for sure that this was it, and I was going to die. Manny pulled me out of that one, thank God. I spent three months in a monastery before pushing on into the void. There's only one way for a non-shifter to pass through the divide, and it's not an easy road to take. Now, if you don't mind, <clears throat> I'd prefer not to talk about the past anymore. There's more than enough to worry about in the present. Okay, well, um, let's tell him about Cortez. Cortez said to look you up when I wanted to go back home, to Stark. Now, why would he say that? I'm not a shifter, and I, I don't know any magic. I'm sorry, Miss Ryan, but you'd be better off asking the Sentinel priests for assistance. Already did. They said I was on my own, that they couldn't help me. 
bloody typical. Those reactionary fools wouldn't extend a hand to help a drowning man if it violated the principles of their bloody balance. But I can't think why Manny would tell you to visit me in order to shift home. It just doesn't make sense. I should get going. Very well. You're welcome back at any time, Miss Ryan. Any time. Hmm. Thank you, sir. I'll remember that. He just doesn't seem to know. We should get him to sign for the map, I think. Sign this, please. It's just to confirm that I made the delivery. Certainly. That was a lot easier than uh, with uh, Captain Nebeve. B. Westhouse. It's Brian Westhouse's signature. I guess we should talk to him again, because Cortez must have had a reason to send this to him. Hello, Mr. Westhouse. Back again so soon, Miss Ryan? I should get going. Oh, okay. That doesn't work. All right. In that case, let's go back to... Hold on one oh. second, Miss Ryan. I just remembered something. It's such a long time ago, I'd almost forgotten, but Manny did give me something that might be of interest. What is it? It's a pocket watch. Manny gave it to me the last time I saw him. I never quite understood why, but maybe you can tell me. Did he say anything about it? He said that when his heart started beating again, he would know. It would be like a message in Morse code, a beacon. Damn watch never worked, and the winding mechanism is broken, so it's probably not worth much. You're welcome to it, if it's any help. Thanks. Okay, so maybe that is what uh, we were supposed to do. An old-style pocket watch. Well, if uh, Cortez gave that to Westhouse before he went to Arcadia, that would have been in the uh, early 20th century, so... Uh, back then it wasn't old-style. But it certainly is now. It's an antique pocket watch. It's not ticking. The knob used for winding the watch seems to have broken off, and there's only a tiny hole left. Hmm. Well, uh, Westhouse said that Cortez said that if its heart started beating again, Cortez would know. So if we can get this watch to uh, run again, conceivably Cortez would know about it and maybe help us come home or something. I don't know. We're going to have to find a way to uh, fix that watch, but I'm going to do it uh, in the next video. See you next time.